Los Angeles Rams 28, Washington Commanders 20. Rams move to 7-7, seven and seven. Commanders fall to 4-10. and 10. Uh, Matthew Stafford finishes 25 of 33 for 258, a couple touchdowns. Kyron Williams with another 152 yards on the ground. So the Rams scored 28 points. It felt like, I mean, there was a point in this game where all they had done was score or fumble the ball away. That was out of their first six drives. Two touchdowns, two field goals, two fumble, fumbles, you know, losing the ball on a fumble by Kyron Williams. Um, felt like the Rams definitely could have put up 40 in this game. Yeah. Um, Kyron Williams has been insane <laughs> since coming into the lineup. And this is that 2022 fifth round draft pick who they just like stumbled upon randomly this year. It's like, oh, he's, he's actually amazing. We should use him all the time. Like Puka Nakua. Yeah. I mean, Kyron Williams, they showed the, the on-off splits for him, which are very noisy but fun to tell stories about. The Kyron Williams on-off, like when he's on the field, it's the Super Bowl Rams team. <laughs> when he's off the field, it's the 2022 Rams team, which was a disaster last year when nobody could block and nobody could catch and nobody could do anything. Yeah. I mean, this is still not a good offensive line, and yet he's averaging over five yards per carry this season. He's averaging three and a half yards after contact per carry. And he's not like a – it's not like we're talking about Derrick Henry, you know, giant 250-pound monster. Like he's 5'9", under 200 pounds. He's playing incredibly well. Uh, and it's amazing, actually, the strike rate that they have in this, in this low-round drafting strategy of – Let's get 10 draft picks all between rounds three and seven. I'm almost, I can't wait to see what the Rams do this offseason because we were just um, talking about this last week. Um, did a video breaking down the Rams and discussing what the offseason might entail. They went, they reverted completely back from go for it to let's get, a, let's go the complete other extreme and be as young as it gets. I, but I wonder if they've added so much youth over the last couple of years now that they're getting this younger nucleus, they're going to feel good about that, and then go back to being aggressive this offseason and get those veterans in there. And I wonder how much of that strategy might coincide with the fact that the Niners look like an absolute powerhouse and have two more years of Brock Purdy. You know, the poor guy can you know barely make rent in the Bay Area right mm. now. And so they have you know, the Niners have plenty of money to continue to spend on free agents. I wonder if the Rams go back to being crazy aggressive and say, all right, we're, we're hitting on day three picks. We got Kyron Williams. We got Puka Nakua. We got Kobe Turner. We got all these third to seventh rounders. Uh, we could either go with another draft class of 10 to 15, or we could start flipping picks again. They get their first first round picks since 2016. We'll have more about that in the offseason. I'm just fascinated by the Rams sitting here at seven and seven. I don't, you don't think they're a very good team, but. <laughs> I don't think 25 teams in the NFL is here very good. But they're Stafford, in, they're but in position. Stafford is dealing this year. Yeah. Cooper Cup. Now, granted, there's a 62-yard busted coverage in there that was horrendous by mm -hmm. Washington. Um, but Cooper Cup's starting to look more like Cooper Cup. Yep. They're unlocking Demarcus Robinson as this third option here. I mean, they're sneaky good here, the yep. Rams. I just think the defense is just so hit or miss every single week. The Demarcus Robinson thing alone would keep me from would make me think that they're not a very good team. The Chiefs uh, could use a guy like Demarcus Robinson. For right. some reason, they get in the red zone and decide now's the time to feed the ball constantly towards Demarcus Robinson, not Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. But all right. Um, no, look, they've got some, like, in a weird way, this is not that dissimilar from their Stars and Scrubs Super Bowl type teams in terms of it's not like it's a very good team overall, but they're very strong in the right areas, albeit instead of Robert Woods, right? It's, it's Puka Nakua. It's a rookie fifth round pick doing it, right? So in that way, it's the same sort of strategy. It is fascinating, though, how they like what are their takeaways from the success they've had in the last couple of years of drafting? Because generally we work on this assumption that nobody is better or worse at drafting than anybody else long term right or at least nobody's good at it um and the rams have had this strategy of okay we're going to trade away all our all of our top picks to bring in established nfl stars knowing that they will be good and then we will just draft 10 times in the low rounds and hope that we hit enough of those to make it worth it and they have in fact they've hit way more than enough of those to make it worth it so do they use that to convince themselves that actually we're better at this than everybody else and we can just keep drafting this way and have a really good team? Or do they just sort of go, we got really lucky 
And now that's going to let us build the next Super Bowl team because we're only paying Puka Nakua $7 a year. And, you know, we're not spending money on all these low round picks that we hit on. Oh, they're going to be – there's a few teams that every single year I just can't wait to see what they're going to do. The Rams are up there again. Because, again, Stafford had another unbelievable game. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I want, you know, is he ever going to retire? Is he going to retire? Is he one of those guys that will retire a little bit younger than you expect? Because he's still young, but he's played a lot of football and taken a lot of hits. But if Stafford sticks around and Donald sticks around, I don't know. There's something there. Um, that said, Washington's bad. Sam Howell didn't play well. They brought in Jacoby Brissett, who looked good after Sam Howell. If you're, you know, wit without splits, not looking good for Sam Howell there, who has um, really regressed. Recently. He has not looked great these no. last few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Things have, he's been. He hasn't been playing as well as he did earlier in the year. In fact, like, man, they were – the Sam Howell trajectory was pointed upwards and it was looking reasonably encouraging for a period of this season. And ironically, like, he only got sacked one time yesterday. Like, <laughs> early in the year, like, if he could just stop getting sacked nine times a game, we would really be onto something with Sam Howell. Well, now he's, he only got sacked one time, but he actually just played like crap and didn't do anything. Um so yeah, that's a really unfortunate thing for Washington. Like, obviously they're kind of kind of be rebuilding this year with the new ownership, and they're probably going to clean house from a structural organizational point of view. If they were able to come out of the season with Sam Howell looking like he was improving and being pretty good right away, they'd be in a quite encouraging place. But actually, that's kind of going off the rails, and it looks like they might still need a new quarterback. Yeah, I mean they're going to be in position to maybe grab QB three. Yeah. If they want, which will be a decision, right? Is that Jaden Daniels? Jaden Daniels wasn't in that QB three conversation at the beginning of the year, but moved himself in with a ridiculous Heisman season. And it always feels like that's just a, just a worrying place to be. You know, we have the choice of QB three. Yeah. I don't know, but in this class it might. No, I know. But like, but we're in this world where nobody has any idea who QB three is at the moment. Like everyone's going to make their case for a different guy. But the fact that that's where the inflection point is, is itself a worry, I think. We have two clear number one and number two guys, and then nobody has any idea who QB3 is. Now, you get your choice of who you think it is, but we know, or at least we think, there's a giant gap between one and two and three. Got people calling me uh, saying I'm using statistical malpractice by saying Brock Purdy is the number one QB since week 10. Yeah. Why? Because you used the arbitrary cutoff of week 10 or because you did something else wrong? The arbitrary cutoff. Okay. Got I it. mean, yeah. I mean, if you do something with it, I'm trying to paint the picture that, like, his play is starting to match the production. Yeah. And you're doing this? Live on the air. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, no more use for this game. Rams are 7-7, seven and seven, and that puts them as the number seven seed right now. Don't want to play the Rams in the playoffs. <laughs> I think you probably do, actually. Maybe you do. Yeah. Uh, so if the playoffs started today, they'd be going to Philadelphia. Yeah, the I mean, I think the Eagles would be comfortable with that, to be honest. <laughs> I think they would yeah. as well. 